In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Christians, we will sometimes hear the phrase bandied about, Judge not, lest ye be judged, and that divorced from context encourages us to be quiet. Little Christians who never say anything about what anyone ever does, never ever, no not once, no not ever. Read a little further in your Bible when you hear that. For you will be judged, and you shall be the judges of all. That is a contrary statement, a conditional statement contrary to fact, as we find in the Bible. And what it is setting us up to do is to be judicious and careful and always judge according to God's word and not according to some other standard. So too we hear today the admonition of Jesus to beware. Judge, dear Christians. Judge with biblical discernment. Judge the words of the prophets in your midst. Judge my words. Judge the words of authors. Judge the words of popular figures, both within and without the, of the church. Let no Christian leader escape the two-edged sword of God's word, which is held in your ear. Every word that is ever uttered to you from a Christian or about Christianity should fall upon that cornerstone of God's word and be dashed to pieces if it is false and stand firm if it is true. Hear the word of the Lord from Matthew chapter 7. Beware the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Dear Christians, wolves abound in these gray and latter days. Christianity itself, in fact, is standing over a fault line right this very moment. Will we be part of the culture in which we dwell, or will we oppose that culture? Christians and churches are deciding within themselves where they may fall in this, and some Select few completely ignore the reality of what's around them. Like the Christians of Laodicea, those who reject, those will be rejected both by Christianity and by culture. That which is lukewarm is spat out upon the ground. Stand firm, dear Christians. The marks of Christianity, repentance, rejection of wickedness, the adoration of God's word, adherence to God's word and to his commands. These are the things that identify what Christianity is, as opposed to worldism calling itself Christianity. The wolves preaching bad fruit do the opposite. Instead of repentance, they will say, no, everything we do is wonderful, there's no need to turn or change. When it comes to attendance of God's house, we will say, no, it's not necessary. I don't need the church to be a Christian. I can be a Christian anywhere else. When it comes to forgiveness, there's no need for forgiveness. Neither do I need to repent of my sin, nor do I need to be forgiven of it because there isn't any sin. I've done nothing wrong. Everything I do is wonderful. And everything you do is wonderful. That is how the wolves and the false teachers teach you to think about yourselves and about the Christian faith. Bitter grapes from thorn bushes, poison figs from thistles, bad trees producing bad fruit. And the axe is laid at the root of that tree. Jesus continues this morning. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. There are churches all around us that say they are Christian. 
There are churches all around that say they are evangelical, that is, that they preach the gospel. There are churches all around that say they are Lutheran. And none of those can ever be true of a church that rejects God's word. Not just the parts they like, also the parts they don't like. All of God's word, from Genesis to Revelation, the entirety of everything in it. Not one jot or tittle can ever be changed. Nothing. Just calling ourselves Christian doesn't make it so. It's the word of God that makes Christians out of us. And we are surrounded every day, every decade, every century, every millennia by popes and priestesses who will lead us any which way we care to go. And following our own desires and following our own flesh, we will follow any wolf present. Anyone who tells us, just be yourself, you're fine just the way you are. Be your old sinful self. Cover yourself in filth, in muck, in mire. Don't bother turning away from anything that you don't want to stop doing. Just be you, man. You're cool just the way you are. Dear baptized, Jesus doesn't want that for you. He wants you to fear the law and its accusation. He wants you to fear death and hell. He wants you to know his love for you. And his love is meaningless and empty without the forgiveness it brings. His forgiveness is empty without his death for sin. And his death is empty and meaningless without an acknowledgement that our sin put him on his cross. Jesus died for sinners like you and me. Not to make us into self-justifying wolves who will talk about our own great deeds and how wonderful we are just exactly the way we are, but rather to make us children of God, not children of wrath. He died to forgive our sins, the actual sins, the actual filth that he also calls us to turn from. Jesus died for you, and he died to set aside the punishment of your sin, take it upon himself, and buried in his own flesh in your place. Our intro this morning comes from Psalm 48. And in the words of the psalmist we hear, We have fought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Right here. In God's temple, in God's house, gathered together here where we meditate on God's word, where we hear and repeat, where we meditate on his works for us and recite them aloud so that all may hear and know. Here, this place, this is where he promises to serve you. This is where he washes sins away in the waters of baptism. This is where he forgives with the words of absolution that I am commanded to say to you. This is where he gives us his word, read and preached, that we can hear, learn, and obey it. Here he gives us his body and his blood for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Beware of wolves, dear Christians, because they are all around. And always hold me to that standard, too. Do I preach the word of God? Am I in agreement with God's word? Am I supporting what we understand of it? Those questions should always remain. They should always remain before all of the prophets. You have been served by many preachers, many prophets before, and you will be served by many preachers, many prophets later. And all of them, every man will have to stand to the same standard. The word of God endures forever. Does this man preach the word of God, or does he preach of his own accord? And because he has his word before you, and always sends his preachers to preach that word, and gives you the tool to identify it, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases for you, and his word does endure forever. 
In the name of Jesus. Amen.